All right. In this video, I want to discuss the mathematics or the basic mathematics of trading. This is very important. As a professional trader, you have to understand what I'm going to be discussing here. Okay. So let's just assume that your position size on each trade that you take, let's assume that your position size is just a second. Let's assume that your position size is 5% on each trade that you take. And after you take the trade, your profit target is 10% and your stop loss is 5%. And let's assume that you have an accuracy of 50%. Whatever system you use, 50% are winners and 50% are losers. So if, if this is these are your parameters, then tell me how many trades will it take for you to generate a 50% return on your portfolio in one year. Let me repeat that. If your position size is 5%, your profit target is 10%, your stop loss is 5%, and your accuracy or your batting average is 50%, then how many trades will you have to take in a year to generate a 50% return on your portfolio? 5050%. Okay. Now that will take some mathematics and calculation, which I will simplify for you now here. So let us go to the next slide. So you will have to take 400 trades. Okay, let's do the calculation here. Let's say you take 400 trades in a year. Out of 400, 200 will be winners, 200 will be losers. So on the 200 trades, you will make 10%. And the remaining 200, you will lose 5%. Okay, so that's 200 times 5%. That is 1000%. Now you have made 1000% return, but this is on a position size of 5%. This is not the return on your portfolio. This is a return on your position size. Okay. So 1000% on a position size of 5%. That's 50%. This is your actual portfolio return. Okay. Very, very simple mathematics. You take 400 trades, 200 winners, 200 losers, you make a 1000% on a position size of 5%. That's a 50% return on your portfolio in one year. Okay. Very, very simple mathematics. When I present this mathematics to you, it sounds very simple, but in reality, in the real world, it is not as simple as it looks on this slide. There are a lot of challenges that you will have to face to implement this system. So I wanted to discuss 10 of those challenges in this video. Okay. Number one, you will have to take 400 trades in a year. So whatever system you are using, let's say you are using a pullback trading system or a breakout trading system, you will have to take 400 trades in a year to hit that return target. Correct. Now 400 trades in a year, is roughly 33 trades, 33, 35 trades in a month that you will have to take. 30, 35 trades in a month means every single day, you will have to take at least uh, more than one trade because there are 20 or 22 trading days in a, in a month. Uh, if we factor in holidays, there are even lesser number of trading days in a month. So let's take an average of 20, 22 trades, 22, 20 or 22 trading sessions. And if you want to take 35 trades in that month, you will have to take more than one trade every single day. So your system has to be designed in such a way that it gives you more than one trade per day on an average, at least in a month. That's a challenge. Okay. Because the more the number of trades you are taking, the more you are exposing yourself to the market and the more you expose yourself to the market, the more is the risk that you are taking. Okay. So it's not easy to take 400 trades in a year. Okay. So if you are being very, very selective, if your filter criteria is too strict, you will never get 400 trades in a day. And on the other hand, if your filter criteria is too loose or too weak, you will get comfortably more than 400 trades in a year, maybe 500, 700 trades in a year. So you have to meet a balance where your criteria is not too loose and not too tight. Okay. That's a challenge that every trader has to face. Nobody is discussing this. Okay. 
but you need to understand this concept you will have to take those 400 trades in a year number 2 the return is pre tax where are we discussing taxes here okay whatever 50% return you saw of course the government will want a share of it correct short term capital gains tax right so the return is pre tax so that 50% return is not a real return you, you will have to give a share of that to your government next challenge the return is pre charges what about commissions what about the money that your stock exchange will ask from you what about the money that your regulator will ask from you what about the money that your uh, depository or the custodian of stocks will ask from you what about stamp duty what about uh, the securities transaction tax what about brokerages okay lot of things are there a lot of people want a share of that 50% okay because there is stock exchange there is regulator there is depository there is depository participant there is stamp duty security transaction tax income tax so that 50% is not a real return it will have to come down i would say if you are making 50% return in a year just uh, remove 50% of that amount and your actual return is most likely going to be 25% so your actual return if if this system is implemented properly will be somewhere between 25% and 50% net of all charges and taxes that is the most likely scenario number 4 you will have to allow the trades to hit sl now this is an important point let's say you buy a stock you put 5% position size now the stock comes 2% down now you are scared okay now you are scared that the next day the stock might hit your stop loss so you sell the shares you book a 2% loss and now you are happy you say that boss look you know i limited my loss my ideal loss was 5% but i cut my loss to 2% and now i am going to make more than 50% return on my portfolio because i am not booking 5% but you have to understand that when you sell at a 2% loss that same trade could reverse back and hit your 10% profit target which means instead of making 10% return on that stock on that position you end up making minus 2.2% return there is a big difference between minus 2% and 10% okay that's a 12% gap so to properly implement this system mathematically or at least theoretically you will have to allow the trades to hit the stop loss let the trade do its own thing maybe it will come down to 4.5% and it will reverse from there who knows nobody knows what will happen number 5 you will have to take every single trade you identify now this is very important people don't understand the value of this statement okay let's say you take three trades and all three trades hit your stop loss now tell me how many traders you know that if they have three losing trades in a row will take the fourth trade fearlessly and confidently how many traders do you know like that okay so your psychology is going to come into play here if you have multiple losses in a row do you have the courage and confidence in your system to take the fourth trade or take the sixth trade after five trades have lost 5% for you imagine losing five trades in a row that's a 25% loss on a position size of 5% so are you going to take that sixth trade well to for this system to work properly you will have to take that trade correct so that's a challenge that's a psychological challenge that is why trading is 1% technical analysis and 99% trading psychology okay the mathematics looks very simple on paper even school kids can do the mathematics but when it comes to actual trading you know life is not that easy number 6 the sequence of trades will matter now imagine you start trading this system okay you want to take 400 trades you start on 1st of january let's say you take first seven trades all hit your profit target okay another scenario is you take the first seven trades all hit your stop loss now there is a big difference the sequence is is different in the first scenario where all seven trades have hit your profit target now the eighth the eighth trade that you are taking you are starting from a higher portfolio base now you are taking 5% position size on your eighth trade 
5% percent of a higher portfolio value okay so you don't have to recover any loss because you already made money on your first seven trades and your eighth trade is going to be on a higher portfolio value on the other hand in the second scenario you have lost seven trades in a row that's a 35% loss on a 5% position size okay so first you will have to recover that 35% then you come to break even and moreover while recovering you are putting 5% position size on a lower portfolio base so you will have to probably make more than 35% to recover that 35% loss okay so remember the sequence of trades will matter a lot what happens in your initial uh, 20 25 trades is of utmost important here next you can't ride the trend i mean you, if you if you sell a stock at 10% profit target and subsequently the profit the stock goes up another 50 100% you can't sit there with regret saying that oh i lost that 90% ride i just booked 10% profit well if you had not sold that stock at 10% profit probably it would have gone down maybe hit your break even or probably it would have hit your stop loss as well okay so you don't know what is going to happen after you have your profit target has been hit so you cannot look at look at your chart in hindsight and say oh i should have ridden the trend okay no you can't ride the trend the system says that you have to book 10% which means you have to book 10% okay for the system to work properly because if you continue to ride the trend let's say the stock goes up 20% and you don't book any profit and in the next 3 days the stock crashes 20% what are you going to do okay you not only you not only lost that 10% profit that you are supposed to make but now the stock has started moving to your towards your stop loss that's a big problem right so that needs to be taken into consideration number 3 you cannot be selective about your trading days you cannot say that oh i am going on a 3 week vacation so these 3 weeks i am not going to trade the the stock market no that doesn't it doesn't work that way imagine you go on a vacation for 3 weeks and during those 3 weeks the market was good and majority of the breakouts of that particular quarter came in the, those those particular 3 weeks you miss out like you take losing trades in the start of the year and suddenly you go on a vacation for 3 weeks all the major breakouts come in those 3 weeks you miss all those breakouts and when you come back from vacation now you are taking trades which are losing value right so you cannot be select you have to take every single trade that you identify on every single trading session no matter what happens okay you have to take the trade you cannot be selective about a trading day you can't say that okay today is the the budget or today is the election so you know i am not going to take the trade no you, you you see the pattern you take the trade okay anything can happen on any given day that comes us takes us to the next point which is you can't get into analysis paralysis let's say you buy a stock you put 5% position size now it starts wobbling now it starts fluctuating and suddenly you are scared okay now you start doing analysis on the position which is ongoing now now you start looking at sales growth now you start looking at cnbc now you start looking at eps growth now you start looking at the ratings of the stock you start going to uh, uh, youtube videos to see what other people are saying about the stock okay you will get into analysis paralysis no matter what people say or no matter what the news channels say there is always a chance that the stock might hit your 10% target and come down or it might hit your 5% tar, uh, stop loss and come down or it might hit your 5% stop loss and continue going down anything can happen in the market you cannot get into analysis paralysis your job as a professional trader is to identify the setup and take the trade and then let the market do whatever it wants to do because you have already done your mathematics okay last point you will have to ignore the index see a lot of people they look at the index and then they take the decision based on what is happening in the index i have seen times when the index is falling but some stocks are shooting up 15 20% in a single day and i have seen times when the index is rising but stocks are falling like 10 15% in a single day so see if your system has has the index as an input 
like for example your index helps you determine your position then i don't have any problem because the index is a part of your trade identification system that is in that case i will not object but if the index has nothing to do with your trade identification system okay which in my case is true i don't look at the index at all i look at the chart of a stock if i see the setup i am going to take the trade irrespective of whatever is happening to the index so you will have to ignore the index if it is not a part of your input anything can happen stocks are not correlated to the index as much as you think okay you might read books saying that you know 3 out of 4 stocks will follow the index and things like that if your setup is correct and you have, you have done your mathematics and overall series of trades your stocks are not going to be correlated to the index because you have done your mathematics you know what you are doing you know how much risk you are taking you know you are tracking your portfolio correctly so that you will know after 100 200 trades you will know that you are on track as long as there is a 50 50% ratio and if the if the ratio is not close to 50 50 that means there is some problem in the system itself okay so coming back to the mathematics this looks very 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 simple but it is not as simple as it looks okay now if you want 50% return but you can't take 400 trades in a year if your system doesn't allow you to take 400 trades in a year tell me what will you have to do you will have to increase the position size correct plus if you can take 400 trades but instead of 50% you want 25% only okay you are more than satisfied with 25% then you will have to reduce the position size okay so you can tinker with with these parameters to achieve your ultimate profit target now if your target is 100% then you will have to make this 10% right so these parameters will help you determine what is the expectancy of your system first you decide how much return you want to make and then you do back calculation and figure out what is the kind of system or what mathematics will you use when you are trading because not every trade you take is going to make you money okay and not every trade you take is going to uh, uh, turn into a loss okay so it is going to be some ratio it is going to be some percentage not every stock you buy is going to turn into gold okay it will you will have losses so you will have to do mathematics you will have to understand these parameters and you will also have to understand the challenges that you will face to implement the system correctly unless you do that you will have a hard time becoming a professional trader so please understand and learn from this video if you have any questions just let me know in the comment section let us discuss this thank you so much